ladies and gentlemen. We are back. It was a fantastic major. And now we're here. We're home. Unfortunately, after talking a lot of smack and telling me there's no chance G2 would beat Falcons in that final, that we had to flip a coin because of the fence sitter that was over in London, Jens and Hootie have decided to abandon ship. They made fun of me. They made fun of me because Genji had a bad result and I was sick. Now, they're nowhere to be found because NA's on top. So I had to bring in my brother, my North American brother, Bel Air, and we're going to talk Major. We're going to talk FIFA World Cup. Bel Air, how's it going? Thank you for coming back. Our super sub, our sixth man of the year. How's it going? It's a pleasure. I'm coming in off the bench when you need me. It's a championship mm-hmm. roster. I'm the, I'm the Jordan Walsh of your Boston Celtics. Exactly. That's a good pull. I thought you were going to say Jordan Poole. But then you hit me with the Walsh, and I respect that. We're already, I'm already able to talk ball. I'm never able to talk ball in, with, with, with Hootie and Jens, you know, because they, they hate America, especially that oxygen, that oxygen guy. It's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's jump right into it. Um, you know, it's been a long time, two years since a majority North American team uh, has won a major, and, uh, and G2 has done it. Uh, they had, you know... Didn't have to play Europe the whole time because, unfortunately, they're just not good enough to make finals anymore. It, I don't know. We'll talk about that later, but <laughs> it, it, it's looking kind of shocking. Um, and, but yeah, six and oh, or six and one, they yep. they finished only dropping that that really really shocking sw- uh, sweep to the to the Falcons. Um, and you know, just an incredible major for for all three of the for all three players for the coach for the team. Beller, I gotta ask you. Is it time to officially, after a little bit of a down period, declare NA is back? Are we are we getting caught up in the moment? Because it feels like if we were to go through and power rank all the teams, I wonder how far it would take us to get to the second North American team. You know? Mm-hmm. So is NA back? TBD for me. We'll see what the world championship shows us. But this G2 team, man, I know we're going to talk about them a lot. I was going through trying to think about how to place them historically because you're like, yeah, like they made all the grand finals, this and that incredible record, 71% winning percentage over the season. But how do they stack up against the big boys? You know, the Dignitas of old and things like that. I mean, they have a way better record than any of the teams that I could find historically 45 and eight on the season. That's incredible when we have never Damn. seen this quality of Rocket League. So I don't know what to say. I, I When people were saying, you know, is this the start of a dynasty? I was like, feels too quick, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> They're really good. Well, let me, let me be the first to say, I feel like maybe NA is not back yet, but mm. I think we have, set, we have set the path, the inciting incident, the inciting season for NA to be back. And this is my theory, okay? Mm -hmm. RLCS X, right? RLCS X, we had a team in Europe completely dominate. There was no parity. They were good. There was one team. There was a team that would come in every once in a while and steal it. But BDS was that team. And BDS set a standard that was so high that the entire region had to catch up if they ever wanted a chance, Mm -hmm. right? You could say that NRG was was kind of that team, but it wasn't the same. You had SSG dominating a split. You saw you saw Envy really compete with them. Uh, G2 at the end of the season when they picked up Drees really caught steam. But to me, this feels like the, a new standard has been set for North America. There's no more, you know, no offense to the, that team, but Spring Space Station one seed when they were probably the seventh or eighth best team in the world at that point. Um I think th- this is a, a culture changer, if that will be. That the best team in the world, the best player in the world can be for North America after it looked like it would never going to happen, right? So um, I'm not ready to call it back yet. I think we're still kind of a two two to three team region with maybe six six like world-class players, seven world-class players. Sure. But I see them as a, as, as a, as a yeah, that culture changer. Because remember, this is something we don't talk about. EU was the most friendship region before RLCSX. Like, all those players that were in league play, they just got out of there right away. Like, all these young players that were just, like, that were better were being held out by the friendship, like, allegations that we used to have. And you had so many players come in 
um, because they weren't teaming the way that the NA teams had all these young players teaming with the peeps and the birds and the bees and stuff and forcing mm-hmm. their way into RLCS. Um, I feel like this G2 team feels like that BDS where it's like, okay, there's a new standard in this region. And once the other teams catch up, the fact they get to play that level is, 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 is really, really, impro- is really motivating. And, and, and like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, I'm really optimistic about the future of the region if this is what they have to aspire to. And it doesn't seem like it's slowing down, right? It's not like it's a, like a vitality last season where it's like, yeah, you know, but like Alpha is getting towards and it's esports. So we don't really know like the twilight of your career is a little, the, it's a more of a gray area than it is in traditional sports. But with this team, mm-hmm. all young, Seth, you seems to be a great coach. He has a lot of synergy with Atomic, even going back into the day with the JNAP Chicago lineups, of course. Daniel and Beast mode have been boys for a while, 2v2 Titans. So this team kind of has set up a path here forward where it could hypothetically, like, I, I don't really know what the stop would be here. What What is, I don't even know what the fear is. Like, yeah. who is the contender who's going to come up here? I don't even think there's an iteration of another North American team that I'm more afraid of than this trio. Like, even if we trade pieces amongst the yeah. other top rosters, I still think I would pick G2. I, I think there's also a, a precedent for G2 of like sustained excellence. Maybe mm. not at the level that, of excellence that we've seen, but I mean, the Chicago JNAP's uh, Atomic roster had a, I believe, went first. I think they won the final regional of the winter, then won the winter major, then were first, first, second, then finished second at the World Championship. So they already had a six grand final or win streak. This one has an eight grand final win streak. And Sathew, you know, if, if anything, has proven that he's able to get a lot out of his players over an extended period of time. Because G2, while they weren't like world beaters last season, were, were quite competitive up leading up to like the... Obviously, like there was issues with Jane Apps' house burning down um but outside of like literally horrible circumstances you know they were the model of consistency in north america um for the whole season so yeah i mean i, I want to talk about you know what you talked about with the players and specifically mr mode so, yeah, i can say mode freely Belair, they they hate me for saying mode they say i should say bmo but it's just mode that's just I that's saw the, the name. i saw the clip i'm not gonna give my two cents because you and i really have a rhythm going so far so <laughs> anyway mr mode mr landon himself landon landon, landon. himself <laughs> yes exactly landon was in landon um listen we've seen this with this kid before Right. There's random weekends. I used to always say best player in the world is beast mode when he feels like it, but Mm. he only seems to feel like about twice, twice a year. Um, It was inevitable that one of those weekends where he looks completely clear the way he did a G8, the way he's looked at in a couple of regionals, um, it was going to land on a land week in one of these days. And and, and he looked like just a a very special, a special, special generational talent. Exactly what G2 wanted when they let go of their legacy rosters to pick up someone at this level. So my question to you is, is, is are we talking you know i mean we'll get to it a little bit later but has has he done enough to be considered best in the world right now with all the competition yeah man i mean definitely in the conversation i think the thing that's exciting about beast mode is it's not cookie cutter and the way that they can beat you and cut you up is there's a multitude of ways whether it's beast mode going super physical demo heavy upfield trying to redirect or if he's hanging back, going for the ceiling challenges, trying to create into transition. There's a lot of ways that he can burn you. Even on zero boost, he's dangerous. I just think when you are that dynamic of a player and can have an impact in so many ways, um, you know that that helps a lot. It helps that his teammates are Daniel and Atomic. But I think <laughs> Beast Mode is definitely in the conversation. I feel like in the version one days, like you said, you know he would wax and wane here and there you'd see him you wouldn't if you were a random fan who showed up and didn't follow the scene you wouldn't think he was anything special in certain series and then he'd pop in other ones but now it seems like he's raised his floor to a level of greatness that has him consistently performing in these events and again three people per team really helps that his teammates are so incredible maybe yeah. in a vacuum we look at it different but you know that's the context that we talk about the c-sport in so i think he's definitely at the top um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been a champion of the kid, but what, what one thing I want to kind of highlight was that, um, we shift talk to, to beast mode 
at the at the major. We know yep. we're doing post game interviews. You can see them all on this YouTube channel, actually, as well as read them on shiftarley.gg. Shout out Finn. And uh, exactly, he was he's doing doing the time of his life. Kind of looks look, kind of looks like there was one player kind of looked like it was Hoxer. I think him and Hoxer were kind of twinning. The, so shout out to Finn. Solo, yeah, the same kind of flow. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, same but body, you were saying? kind of phenotype. I guess that's the word. I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, you know what what Beast Mode said was that losing. The process of obviously the very public kind of three three lands that he missed last year it made him change the way that he wanted to be played that he wanted to play and mm-hmm. i think um what you've seen from him this year that's made him so good and he's always been in the conversation for the best player in north america he, like he said he, like i said he's had his weekends where he looks clear but i think you saw it starting at ga which was the first kind of time we saw them after they failed to make the world championship after they failed to w- w- make the spring major where it felt like it wasn't like uh, a hard carry play style anymore like yep. you said it was you know being physical it was being like controlling touches it was being like valuable on on low boost and making the right play constantly and playing more midfield than just you know get me the ball and get out of the way and i think it's really cool to see a player grow from losses when they can continue to get paid and they can continue to get big stats by playing the way they want to play but you see, you know, I think about players like Itachi. I think about players like Seiko, where they came in as these mechanical phenoms. Even, I, I think, to a lesser extent, someone like Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they come in as mechanical phenoms, but they they care enough uh, in a way to... They care enough about winning enough to change the way they play in order to win. Like it just that becomes the goal. It doesn't become clips. It doesn't become staff. It doesn't become salaries. It's just about winning. And I think he's been able to keep the dynamic element of his playmaking while also rounding out his game really nicely, which I think some players never learn. Like I love Yan, but he's still struggling to figure that out, right? And we saw it on display in the semifinals is that there is one team where their talisman was able to morph his game to what was needed in the situation there's another one who was up with boost and he would dominate you but you could steal his boost and keep him away so i'm just so super impressed super impressed by beast mode and i cannot wait to see him at the shift summer league i can't wait to see him at the uh, esports world cup and i cannot wait to see him at the world championship yeah and and to put a bow on that point i mean the yan you know the heliocentric offense you kind of are monstar sucking away the powers mm-hmm. of your teammates where Drufino is playing a much different role than what he did previously. The same goes for Lost. Of course, we saw them look incredible against a battered and bruised Vitality team. But to kind of go back to G2, I mean, it's buy-in across the board. And that's why mm-hmm. I think we're going to talk about it a little later. But Sathu deserves all the flowers for getting all three of these number one options previously in their careers to all coalesce into something that is greater than their individual power. I mean, we saw Daniel really locking things down defensively. Atomic, I mean, Atomic was the guy a couple seasons ago Mm. in all of North America, and he has decidedly opted to, you know, kind of take a little more of a shadowing role to beast mode, um, you know, especially as we see him winning the MVPs and the honors and everything um, for all of them to be able to decidedly make this play style work together um, is, is something that definitely has led to them making every single grand finals this season, which sounds yeah, crazy to it's, say. It's like, I think, and we've talked about this on this podcast before the the kind of coach player duo and how valuable it is. Where, you know, I'm so glad I can make some some nice NBA references without being chastised. You know, back in the day, they used to say Tim Duncan would let Greg Popovich yell at him. Mm. Because all the other players were like, if he's allowed to yell at Tim Duncan, then I can't get upset. Right? Pop yells at everybody. And we see it. Exactly. And so it's like, you see it with Itachi and Eversax. You see it with Atomic and Sathu. The two top major winners this season come with a coach and a player, a star player that is setting a tone right away for his teammates that we're going to listen to the coach. We're going to implement the coach's play style. We're going to play the way the coach wants to play. And for an esport that has always struggled to listen to their coaches, you're starting to see, I mean, going back to last year with Vitality and Farah, that the teams that really lock in on maximizing their coach's value and the coaches who are able to maximize their player's value are starting to become the top teams in this esport, and you can't just win off talent anymore. But let's talk about legacy, all right? That's what Mm. we do. We're a talk, so we're a podcast. We can't be doing nuance. We have to be talking legacy, okay? Go a little first take on that. 
I want to hear, Bel Air, if you had to, in your, in your like head canon of North American all time greats, now, where have Daniel, Beast Mode, and Atomic catapulted up to? Because there's some real, there's some real implications to this championship. Um, that is a fantastic question. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm not doing the silly thing of forgetting about like the all time great. Like, yeah, it's like you're going through listing the best centers ever and you find yourself at eight yeah. and you just didn't even mention Shaq. I'm trying to make sure yeah. that I'm not forgetting anybody. But okay, I mean, so one thing I want to I'm going to start trying to integrate this into yeah. like Rocket League talk, create my cloud. You here. know, you know how there's we talk about in sports like Okay, I, I'm going to use the NBA again because I can. This is great. Pre-merger, <laughs> right? We don't talk, sure. okay, this, since the merger, or like in, in uh, you know, there's other sports that have that as well. I mean, the Premier League's only been around for like 50 years or something. Um, I think we should start separating it. Pre and post flip reset. Ooh. Because I don't think it's fair with such a core mechanic that has essentially defined the game that we class players like Cronovi who... The best part of his career, he couldn't even use the most useful mechanic in the game. He does, should not have to be judged against Squishy and Atomic and and, and 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 Justin if he couldn't even use that when he was at his best. Right? They didn't even have a Finnick for a solid 50-50s. Exactly. I mean, exactly. What, what are you supposed dude, to like do? Fireburner had to like learn how to do it. He was the yeah. only one who could do it on an Octane, apparently, or a Dominus. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask you, post-Flip Reset, which I believe was like season two or three, mm -hmm. I have to get an exact date if I'm going to push this narrative, but nonetheless mm -hmm. who who's who's where where are they so don't, I mean, don't 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 put those guys in there because it's not fair to them it's i want to make sure i'm not getting caught up in the moment so who are we thinking about nrg when they first brought together you know the garrett squishy justin it was like oh my gosh how can so you possibly one, beat though, this right? team but they didn't really they have didn't the same results yeah, they, they didn't, didn't see him at land, land. Really. Cloud9 has to be mentioned, although they came in as kind of underdogs over that Dignitas team. G2 have been no, front that, that's runners one the whole way. Um, they won four lands, right? Is that true? I believe they're, they were four-time land champions. God, I love, back, I mean, when they me, had like, back when they yeah, had like when one a, a lot year. Of, yeah, exactly. Well, no, no, but that, I'm talking about outside of RLCS, right? Mm -hmm. back, in the, back in the day. Um, let me see. Yeah, so they won... E-League? No, they didn't win E-League. Where have I gotten this from? They won... E-League was a G2, and then like that, uh, I think yeah. like I-Ignites, like TSM or something, won one. Yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make sure I get this right. Maybe they didn't win four. Maybe I'm like thinking of NRG or something. But anyway, I, I, to me, they, they got to be there. I'm thinking these, my top three, to be honest with you. Hit me. Season, like, core C9. I think the most iconic maybe team of all time. Of course. Um, I got Justin Squishy. Uh, sorry, Justin Garrett Turbo. Yeah, right. Three time land winners, I believe. I think they won World Series of Esports. I think they won X Games and they won the Season Eight World Championship. They did. And I'm gonna be honest. Number three, Daniel Beast Mode Atomic. I got them over Atomic Chicago JNAPS. I got them over JNAPS. I mean, I'm just talking about results, right? Mm -hmm. I got. I, I I put them over. Justin Squishy Garrett because they didn't get a chance to play LAN. I can't put any of those RLCS X teams. That's fair. Above a team that went that went to back to back lands and finished second and first. It's not their fault. It really isn't. But they've done just as well as NRG did online, and they've dominated the uh, the online. And like, to be honest, I don't think that NRG team would have beaten BDS because I think I look at the way they played BDS in that Sweden major and they look like it was a playstyle problem. I think SSG would have had a better chance against them with typical Arsenal Rettles. I think Envy would have had a better chance. And I could be convinced that FK would have probably cooked them too because he cooked them before after on phase, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Wait, we're, we're doing a, a first take segment right now? Yes, yes. <clears throat> G2 is the best student. team of all time. Of all time. No one will no, ever be better than them. I think three is very fair. Three NA right now. And it can go up. If they win the world championship, I think we got to start talking about them being the best roster to ever, ever come from North America. I think that's fair, especially if it's another grand finals. Nine for nine mm -hmm. is just preposterous. Um, yeah. So that that's, that's, I'm not, I'm not balking at that. Yeah. And then individually for me, I think this jumps atomic into the top five NA all time. Mm. I think you have a very clear top five NA all time. Actually, it's, Squishy, Justin Garrett, 
Jane Apps. Jane Apps. Atomic. I was waiting for it. Atomic. I thought he yeah. might be number Those one. Two. No, I, that was in no order. That was in no order. Yeah. To me, it's Squishy, Justin, Garrett, Atomic, Jane Apps. That is your absolute tier one of North American Rocket League pros historically. I think you put Cronovi, Gimmick, Torment, uh, Chicago. I think you can even sl- slip like a Mist in there, an FK in there in that second tier. Mm-hmm. But that top tier, I think he's joined it. He's He has as good a resume as anybody in the open era. It's now him, Monkey Moon, and Seiko who are now all on four grand finals and lands in the open era and two cha- land wins. So it's setting up quite a little... I mean, I wanted to talk about this later, but the world championship is setting up to be quite quite an interesting narrative of the race to that third one. Vatira, the entirety of Vitality, Itachi and Seiko, Atomic, Monkey Moon, and I think... I think that's it. Are all on two land wins. Man. That's basically every contender besides Jet. Besides, I think that's all the cont- that's five of the top six teams besides Falcons. Yep. All one of those teams is going to have the first three time land winners in the open air and tie Kate up for RLCS land wins. So I- I'm really excited to see that. But it's unfortunate yeah, that OG Esports is going to win the whole thing and just throw a wrench into <laughs> don't it. Don't talk to but... me about don't talk to me about that team, man. <laughs> They, but, uh, they don't talk. I don't want to talk about that team right now. But yeah, well, I think Beast Mode. I think Beast Mode's got a chance. I got an outside shot at top ten all time NA right now, just because of the he has sneakily a f- ridiculous resume. He's won a show match where it was just basically him and then him and Dan. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he had to play every mode. He backpacked into that. He's got a second place finish at an RLCS major. He's got a major MVP and a major championship. He's got a top three with V1. He's got a top six with V1. He's got. Seven la- seven regional wins. I think he's there as well. And Sathu, man, I mean him and Atomic, they pretty much share share resumes in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Five S tier events, four of those are top two, and two of those are wins. I mean, you want to talk about efficiency at the top? I mean, insane. If they're good, you know, Sathu will give you that little extra oomph. When typically yeah. I kind of look at a coach as like kind of a glamour ad, where it's mm-hmm. like you know I don't really know how additive they are. Uh, but mm-hmm. again, back to the different structures and styles that G2 can put up. Um, it helps when you have, again, when you're flush with talent. But um, we could go on and on about singing the praise yeah. of this team because they deserve it. They've been excellent yeah. all season. No, no. And I think the last one I want to talk about um, is you know what you mentioned. Is So we talked about is this a dynasty or one-off moment. So I genuinely want you to think because – it's by no fault almost of a team that does this well that they don't win again at the biggest stage because a lot of the time the more you play the more tape there is on you and sometimes naturally teams just they play you so many times they watch so many replays that they those little things where you don't have that if a new roster forms or or something like that i think the world championship is their best chance to win again because there's going to be no more new rosters that you can't get a read on where they'll have the upper hand because they'll be know how to play g2 and g2 won't know how to play them but I want to ask you, do you genuinely think that this team could stay like together like on like vitality NRG levels of lengths and really, really dominate? I do, man. I mean, I think if you're going to kind of fork in the road two destinies, two outcomes, them winning this, hot take, Bel Air, them winning this <laughs> makes them more likely to win the world championship. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you get up to the summit twice and you can't overcome that and win one of these, yeah. maybe you kind of get into your head in the moment, you know, even just a, totally. a parting thought about can we do this or not? But now they've shown that they're the best in the world and they smacked this Falcons team who clearly looked rattled, clearly looked like it was a big moment for them. And you kind of have to take those lashes before you can get over the hurdle. Totally. There's not a lot of situations where we have Zen like, uh, you know, rookie performances yeah. in, in this sport. So now G2 have got there, couldn't get over the hump, decided to, you know, come back stronger and get here. Uh, I, I don't see any reason why G2 can't win this again. Uh, but for Falcons, you know, they're going to have another land before uh, we mm-hmm. even get to the world championship. I think they have Saudi E League. Um, yeah. And then I, I, I'm up. not sure if the Esports World Cup is crew battles anymore. Don't quote me on that, but I think they might have gone away with that. Okay. I think it might just be straight up 3v3 now. I could cool. be totally wrong, though. Please, like, if you're listening to this, please do you not quote me. You heard it here first. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I saw kind of some weird language, but, um, you know, just on quickly on to, to, to finish off about this, I think um, what you mentioned earlier on, you said that they have so many, they, their players are willing to kind of morph 
and mm-hmm. play different roles. I think that gives them a lot of an advantage. And I think it's something very interesting in this esport that you're going to start to see with rosters sticking together longer. Maybe this is a hot take, but I think because you have to be so good at this game to compete at the highest level, that, but in like NRG, what was the NRG plan? Sit, 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 accumulate boosts, get them to overcommit, Justin, go. Okay, well, we figured that out, right? What was the, the SSG plan? Daniel and Ar- uh, Red- Reddles and Arsenal, you know, go go get boost, go demo, Daniel get the ball boost. They're like, even BDS was like, contr- is like control the midfield, mark by eight, go bother somebody, force first man, and Monkey Moon get the ball and do something. I think now with how good players are, if you start to get figured out, you can just change it. And it's not like, you know, you used to hear people being like, oh, we're trying out a new play style. Like, no, you can straight up just swap everyone's roles. Okay, now beast mode, now you're going to play third man. Daniel, go chase, right? And while tendencies still exist, you can change those tendencies if you have every tool in your toolkit. And it'll be interesting to see if they start doing that the longer they go. And I think something else that they're able to deploy, which we see with greatness, is the addition of something new. And it's not like ceiling defense is new by any sense. Mm -hmm. But Beast Mode's proficiency with it, like for anybody listening, the next time you're watching a G2 match, just like have a running tally of how many times Beast Mode totally kills an offensive push with a ceiling, like defensive challenge. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable how good he is at those when you can (laughs) totally be put out of position. I I think the addition of something new like that, that teams haven't really prepped for, you can't really scrim that because not everybody's very good at that. It is kind of siloed within the G2 style. I, you mm-hmm. know, that that's something that you that you can't prep for, um, which I think gives well, you another know, edge. If you guys actually want to see, you don't have to wait for the next time they play because Bel Air just dropped a beast mode MVP hey. analysis video that you can see. Where can I see that, Bel Air? It's on YouTube. If you've heard of it, uh, Bel Air Baller, just search me. You know, we had the beast mode one that came out with the MVP stuff the other day. We had a beast mode video right before the major dropped. I can't stop talking about Mr. Connerman, it seems like. Yeah, but, dude, uh, he's you just, know. who wants to stop, you know? Hey. I wake up in the morning and I remember he's a major MVP and it puts a smile on my face. I know? wake up, I brush my teeth, and I'm watching some Landon on the side, you know? Exactly. It's perfect. What I can't think of a better way to get up, to be honest. Yeah, um, but yeah, let's shift over to the losing team, shall yeah. we? Team Bums. Falcons absolutely dominated this tournament leading up to their finals. Unfortunately, similar to the last London event, that domination ended in shocking fashion, right? 4-1 by G2. Um, Many people saying this was their best and maybe only chance for this roster to win in RLCS land. I vehemently disagree, and it sounds like it feels like you do too. I do. I, I, this was not Falcons as we've known them. Mm-hmm. Collier's was not himself. Heavy first touches, he- handing the ball away the entire time, was not an effective striker. Seemed like the only one who was at close to 100% was TRK. And totally. if you have a roster with Ruas and Collier's, and, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think they're probably going to stick as a duo. I think they um, have some... Th- there's a little, there's something there. There's some know. cohesion. Like, almost like a brotherhood to be yeah don't I'm, i will swear i don't want to hear that stupid t word they use but um like yeah it's it's i mean there's something there i could that for sure i, I don't think, know what it is but. i think so and uh trk is not slowing down um yeah. i came into well, this they can't event upgraded mina i don't care what anyone says i i, I understand nupo can do cool stuff mm-hmm. in terms of like scheming and like he's got a lot to learn you can't get better. I mean, in the three they have, that's the best possible roster. That's your front man. That's your on the field veteran who mm-hmm. still totally has it. Um, I think this roster is sick. I don't see anybody popping up in Mina who's going to challenge the throne. Uh, I I am unconvinced of any reason why Falcons will not be able to continue doing this for the world championship and seasons to come. So long as this roster is together. Yeah, totally. I would agree. I think, um, like you said, you got you got to get your experience. Like the twins, for they they've been around for a while, but they didn't make their first two majors and the first two splits they played. They had a great run um, in their second in their first major. Didn't play any American born players. That's that's the problem. They did mm. not play a single American born player in Boston. And as we've learned, Mina just doesn't like playing NA. I would love a Bel Air video, honestly, on why Mina can't really beat NA that well, other than like a certain Swiss match. There's some there's something about it because the 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 matchups are actually kind of insane. I'm pretty sure NA's like like 
10 and 4 or something in the last two years in inter, inter regional matchups. Man. So it's an interesting thing. Yeah, like they 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 t- they usually beat them, which is weird because they play on European servers and we hear about it all the time. Um, but yeah, this team, I think they needed they were it looked they were like a little overconfident, maybe. Mm. Like, hey, we just smacked these guys, we just beat the best the previous major champions to walk in the park, they get punched in the face game two. Uh, sorry, game three in that in that with that zero second goal, and then it feels like they never recover but these are really young players like we saw we've seen outside of zen like you said and we've seen every prodigal rookie come in and have to like figure it out and trk shockingly young only like 18 years old um so he's you know he's been around for a while but still you know relatively young compared to some of the big stars now um so i think this team's only getting better i still kind of delusionally believe they're the best team or not the best team in the world but i think i still would put my money on them to win the world championship i think that they have the formula they just needed to lose a little bit to figure out hey this is how we're going to do it against the best teams in the world and not random mina of six seeds i agree and i I think it's always a little tough when it's kind of like um what's a what's a good comp for this maybe this is this is too niche but do you remember back in the day when like boise state would go like 16 yeah, and zero field yeah yeah and they wouldn't play anybody because they were in some nobody conference and mm-hmm. then they would come up to the big leagues for like you know the bowl game yeah they play in get, a bowl game and they and get and they lose by like well they sometimes they lose by like 10 but they yeah. might have won if they were playing you know some of these group of five college football teams oh, i get to talk about college football on <laughs> this is awesome dude um some of those group of five teams yeah sometimes it's just the experience they need i think about ucf a few years ago yep um right going undefeated for all those the university of central florida as for a went there for everyone in europe that's how you should know where it is but that was a college football team that went 11 or 13 you know against lesser competition sort yep. of a falcons-esque run but we're pretty much as good as any team in the country. So yeah, I totally agree. It's like that. And I think once they, you know, they're going to get a lot of land experience here. They're going to get esports world cup. They're going to get into the world championship. I I really like, and then after that, we'll talk about it later, but the FIFA E world cup, I don't know when that's going to be, but either way, it's another international tournament that they'll probably be competing in as a trio. So super excited, super excited to see, uh, you know, what happens with this team. I really think their best days are ahead of them and people are just playing, uh, they just they just saw what happened last time to the mm-hmm. last Falcons roster after London, and they just think it's going to happen again. But I I don't agree. Um, yeah, so let's talk about teams that were in the finals. Who really cares? But I guess we have to. <laughs> um, but we saw something that's never happened before, which is really cool. A, for the first ever four region top four Man. in RLCS, Furia taking out Vitality in absolutely bombastic fashion. Trufino throwing up the middle finger. Zen ready to scrap. It was an absolutely legendary end. Can't wait for that rivalry to hopefully get its grudge match in uh, in Dallas. Um, uh, Gentlemates uh, did something to BDS that, you know, BDS, you know, they for as great as they have been, they love to have an absolutely brutal, brutal, brutal loss on land for no reason. Um, and then G2 and Falcons filled out the rest. So here's my question for you. Bel Air. Now that we've had kind of a couple lands where the top Sam and Mina teams are kind of matching placements or outplacing uh, NA and EU teams, are we are we ready to call Mina and Sam just like part of the big four regions? Are we are we having a four region talk now, or is it still are they still expansion regions? Am I am I out of the loop? Am I inclusive ahead of the curve here? I already thought that we had four who were kind of up near the top or maybe a one and then a three below them you know Mm -hmm. i think it's tough when the math makes it very challenging where if we were to send we've we've seen that these sam two seeds are Mm -hmm. always way more venomous than we assume they will be Mm -hmm. we've even seen like when team secret beat version one in the quarterfinals what was that yeah and that fake land that didn't that didn't happen hey the the best team won gen g you know what are you gonna do but sure. I think we've already seen that these Sam teams, and now it's to the point where a couple seasons ago, you would look at like your, you know, four through seven and you'd be like, I don't know who these guys are. Mm-hmm. Now you look and it's like, oh, you know, AJG is here, Kayo's here, like, you know, even complexity is not. Mm-hmm. We kind of have enough players in Sam where it's like, oh, these are competitive. If we were sending mm-hmm. four Sam teams, 
I think this conversation would be easier to have because we would see the talent that's here. Um, of course, mm -hmm. it doesn't extend all the way down. I feel like Mina is a lot more top heavy yeah. than what we see from Sam. Um, but I, I, you know, if if at the end of the day we're just taking the top seed from all of these regions and then everyone who Europe brings, how can you not consider Sam and Mina up with the big boys? Because clearly, Falcons and Furia are just as competitive as you know the gen g's of the world it's tough because there's g2 hmm. there but you know yeah. I, I i think it's i think it's time how do you feel about it i'm gonna have to disagree with you i still got more so mina sam i, I i'll hear out but to me being a, a major region is about depth of talent mm. not the top teams um to me I, I look at this i look at this major three north american team like the same amount of north american teams as european teams made top eight Yep. This, there was only one interregional matchup for both, so it's not like one of them just got like free trips in. They were both sure. guaranteed a spot in the top four. Same amount of North American and European teams in the top four. And then there was no European teams in the final. So um, I think NA, the depth is still there, even though we make fun of NA depth. Like, Sam, t Sam 2 hasn't had a great year at LAN compared to other years, right, where they were getting top eights, top fours. Like, last year, I believe it was... Sam 2 got a top 8, they got a top 4, and then they bottomed out two top 16. All the Sam teams, I think, went top 16 mm -hmm. at the World Championship. But to me, it's like, your to be a major region, I need to see, like, two... Like, of, if you're sending... Let's say if... Because if Sam sent four, if they sent Nip, Complexity, Secret, and Fury, which I believe, I think most people consider, like, I guess, Crew as well. Yeah. I don't still think... I still don't think that any of those teams beside Fury you would bet on to make the top eight um, over a space station, over an oxygen, over a Luna galaxy. I think a couple of them, and this is me being a homer, I don't think a couple of them I wouldn't bet to make top eight over my dogs on Shopify Rebellion, all right? Because they're, they're just going to glass cannon all over them. Um, but to me, it's got to be, I want, and I want this to happen. I want to see Sam show up with four teams at a hopefully an expanded land and all of them challenge for top eight or feel like they should be in the top eight. I want to see Mina have two, three teams the way that NA does that you feel like can and will make top eight. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, they need to do that first. I think Sam's right there. I think give them a couple more years. They will be there. I think Mina's got a little bit to go. But yeah, those that's kind of my parameters. I think we have different parameters. You said the top team. I said the depth. So I think we're both right in a way. And I don't want to fight with you because you're my guest. But uh, for me, they got a little bit to go because, you know, your second best team not being a top eight team in the world when uh, NA and EU have both obviously had top eight teams as their one and two teams all season. Mm -hmm. Gen G's still been a top eight team despite kind of a form fall off. Um, I think that's that's my kind of parameter for a major region i'm excited to hear luna galaxy getting a shout on the podcast didn't have that on my yes. bingo card uh excited Dude, to hear it a chronic gang okay that bs plus competition of chronic is still oh in my there somewhere. goodness they need to let me coach him i'll bring it out of him i'll tell you that no more tiktok edits no more tiktok edits of yourself on your own page we're getting in the we're doing 120 a week or sorry when, the past two weeks too much when twitter likes were public a chronic was like you know the he demon. was in his own zone yeah you know what he got a lot of hate, but I was I was probably the same way at, when he was six when I was sixteen. Let's is not that, talk about it. Is that BS plus competition or is that logo a zebra? Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, it's the zebra cut one where he was he was playing with like freaky I think and there's just he was like one v three everyone. I, I thought he was gonna be I thought a chronic was gonna be what Zen was. I thought and he, he was, was the best still. player on that liquid team when they brought in the youngsters yeah. initially. Yeah, literally, I was like, man, this guy's unstoppable. I, he's got a he's got a place in my heart, a chronic. I'm rooting for you. I believe in you. Let's see it. I hope you get to make the World Cup as a Portuguese. That would be really cool. Let's, anyway. let's bring it back. Can yes, I just I say it. one more thing? Twisted Talk. Minds, I'm unmoved. Um, yeah, I, totally. I, I mean, what happened to Ahmad? I feel like, of course, you have to have talent at some level. And maybe it's just, maybe it, there, there's, 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 how do you say, there's many ways to skin a rabbit or whatever that dumb saying is. <laughs> You can do what you got to do, but Twisted Minds, can we see a little bit of excitement and some like mm. oomph when you're here at these LAN events? I feel like you kind <laughs> of need it to get you over the hump. It felt yeah. like they were just kind of here to, to show up and business as usual. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. Mina does not have the depth. Um, I, I guess we'll give it time and we'll see where the, the, the team rocks of the world 
end up going. Yeah, totally. I mean, it seems like there's like three Mina players per two years that come up and just rock our worlds. Mm. So good. There's a good thing. There's two Mina spots that hopefully Team Rock will will kind of become the rule one to the Falcons, old Falcons, and challenge them and then start pushing up. But yeah, right now two one three finishes uh, for Mina two at both LAN events. Um, lost the game to Europe's 48th best team uh, in that 02 round, or I think the 02 round. So I'm off that. I'm good with. I'm good without that. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Europe and let's do some hating. How how about we do that? Because we have. I haven't hated on Europe in a good minute. I've been been a good boy. I've been being <laughs> objective. They call me Mr. Fairness, and uh, now I get to finally do it. It's been a while. Europe has its worst, potentially its worst RLCS land ever. Right, you can argue they was they were pretty bad in LA. They were pretty bad in season seven, but they got a team to the finals and they won one of those. Mm. No EU in the final for the first time ever in an RLCS land. Only one team top four. I had to hear a bunch of bots on Twitter tell me that NA was finished and now they're winning lands in Europe. Can't make top two. Now, now that I'm done hating, I'm going to be objective. Is this a regression? Are, are is Europe finally regressing? Are they getting complacent? Or has the rest of the world simply just caught up and now that we're playing a lot of international ball, you know, they don't get that that's that nice regional buff. Tough event. You have BDS get cannibalized by their own region in Gentlemates. Mm-hmm. And then Gentlemates, what a performance. Mm-hmm. About as good as you can get and still lose. That was such yeah. a great series. And Vitality had the kind of Redosin card that they can play here where he was sick. We don't get yeah. to see them at the peak of their powers. Maybe they overcome Furia. And that's the fourth time they've played this season. So they really, that is a grudge match in like a true sense. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like Furia was bringing a little extra pizzazz to that one. So, you know, I think there's another world where Redosin's healthy and they overcome Furia and Gentlemates, you know, get the one or two things yeah, to roll their way. That was a game way. on the margins. That was a match on the margins. They exactly. lost that one there. So, you know, I think it's just kind of how the cookie crumbled this time. Um, really disappointed by Oxygen, only because Hootie's not here. Um, but, you know, that that was a, a rough showing for Europe. Uh, no Carmine Core. That's well documented why they weren't here. Um, but <sighs> I, I don't... Best major ever, man. Hey, I don't see any regression. Um, I still think they are the dominant region. And, uh, you know, I, I, I still think the highest of them out of anybody so i've been testing out a theory can i can i can i i'm all ears may i um i think what we're seeing with europe right now is a is is a better version like the teams are better than they were but it feels like we're kind of in the inverse of 2021 2022 Mm. because if you remember in 2021 22 we'd be like may na's got ssg g2 phase uh v1 like man they could they you've got four in the top six in, in in la we got four in the top eight in in dallas um and then eu had moist and bds and carmen corp was pretty good at that time noli atachi astral but carmy but it felt like there was two great teams in mm-hmm. europe and then four very good teams in north america now i think the four teams in europe right now are better than the four teams in america were like i want to make that very clear before you know people take it out of out of context but um i feel like the the fact that there's there's like an embarrassment of talent in europe has almost handcuffed them from being able to do what other regions are doing in north america three of the four best players are on the same team maybe mm-hmm. the three best players depending on who you ask you could argue in mina it. the three best players are on the same team in, in sam three the three best players are on the same team agreed um monkey moon is not or maybe he is but monkey moon has not been able to leave bds they're not going to let him go Drawley will probably be the same, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Zen just locked down until 2026. No way that Carmen Corp's letting go of Atira. So these super teams can't form, yeah. right? And it's the same thing we saw with Atomic, Beast Mode, Daniel, and First Killer back in the day in NA, where they couldn't move around because their their teams aren't going to let go of their best player that gets them great land results, right? That's why they're in the, the eSport. Um, and so I think it's not that Europe's regressing. It's just that the rest of the world is able to do this ultra uh, aggregation of talent. And they can't because there's too many good players, right? And like, uh, I think that's why you see a team like Gentlemates, who low-key are the most stacked team results-wise. I know it's because they want to land, but like Itachi and Seiko are all-time greats in this game, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, for as well as... 
as as for as good as Rise and Atto are, they don't have the the cabinet that those guys have, right? Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's it's more of that maybe in the off season or when all these guys' contracts is up, Europe needs to do a little. Uh, they, they need to consolidate a little bit because they currently don't have a team that is as cut and dry best in the uh, in the region the way that NA me and the Sam do. And I think the confidence you get from just bashing people's head and heads in all the time is actually really important. We've seen, we've seen in, in, in the events past. So that, that's my theory. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, a great theory. I'm right there with you. Confidence is huge. Europe is the Western conference of the NBA mm-hmm. where there's so mm-hmm. many teams there's at the beginning of the season, there's, you know, in the NBA, there's what, 10 teams who hypothetically yeah. could make a finals. And it's like, oh my gosh, every team Seven has a great player, you know? Yeah. And then over in the East, you got the Celtics and then, you know, the Sixers. And you, got, you got LJ Maxey. Exactly. LJ Maxey. <laughs> LJ Maxey. Out Maxie, there just doing his best. You know, uh, Hawks are Embiid. I'm sure there's a better yeah. pun there, but, you know, um, it, it's just the, they have so much talent over in Europe. And the other thing that I think that we don't often consider, it is a young esport. So you kind of do find these, you know, the rosters kind of come together through friendships mm-hmm. and things like that. And with Europe, having so many countries that compile it, comprise it, you kind of get these little pockets that we're seeing be broken down more and more. But, you know, you kind of have your, the Spanish players kind of team with mm-hmm. the Spanish players and whatnot. Yep. And I don't want to in overblow sa- in that point. Africa. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. That's That was my <laughs> next example. <laughs> you stole it right out from under me. So, um, you know, you, you have that to contend with in Europe where you don't in North yeah. America. North America is North America. Everybody plays together, you know. Mm -hmm. The boys of the boys, you can kind of create the G2s of the world. Um, But I I agree with you. Once these contracts kind of come up, once you have enough losing and a monkey moon gets to the point where he's like, dang, I really would want to play with Zen. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, then then you'll kind of. Yeah, or if, you know, if 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 Atto goes, it was fun, but like, I'm better than Juicy. I think I'm better than Juicy. I think they think I'm better than Juicy. Let me go over there and give them a boost. Right. Ooh. If that's you had my, that's to, my, that's my big thing. If you had to lock before Worlds one roster, who is the roster who you are the most convinced will stick going into next season? Um, in Europe? I don't think any of them will. Wow. I think they're all gonna. F- I think all those top rosters are gonna shuffle. Wow. I think. Um, I don't know about Oxygen. Maybe because like they just don't have that much of like maybe if like maybe if like Nolly or Jack want to go home or something. Then maybe they'll they'll make a change. But where's Jory like, is going? China. Okay, I'm done with that guy. <laughs> Nihau. Put way too much stock in him this year. Yeah, APAC. Get ready to learn virtuoso. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I think um, I think I think all of them are probably going to just shuffle again because they just love doing that. They'll be the players, the pit, the pillar players that aren't allowed to leave, and they'll just kind of pick and choose who they want. Um, I would love to see. Like if in my in my dream world, I would just love to see Zen go to Gentle Mates for Juicy. I just think they could just win every event ever, but it's not happening. So, Gentle Mates we'll same roster, write it in Sharpie for me. I okay. I don't know why you would okay. change that roster. Huge fan. I I think I think that they're gonna get greedy, and I think they're gonna think they can steal a better player than Juicy. But mm. I don't know. The yeah, MVP. Yeah, if, if there was gonna be one, <laughs> Malcolm Butler. Anyway, um. <laughs> Let's move on. Great major. Shout out to every player that was at the major. Shout out to Power, because I want to shout out Power. Shout out Hunter Dope from team. Chiefs. Man. Yep. Great. He he really showed showed a little bit. Stopped playing basketball on the weekends, or football, or whatever he does, and and, and started balling. Um, yeah, shout out. It was a great major. It was really fun. Didn't have to look at the blue wall. Uh, Beast Mode won. Like, who's got it better than us? Um, let's move on, though, and let's talk lists. We've done legacy talk, now we're doing lists, because... It's an NA podcast now. I love a list. We do is lists and legacy talk. Okay. I love a list. We're going to go through our top five teams, and then we're going to go through our top five players entering the Shift Summer League, and then that tournament in Dallas after that. Can I add so, a caveat before we get going? Talk to me. You got to the list before I did, and I didn't want to mm-hmm. just copy your homework. So I tried to, within reason, not copy you as much as I could. So with no, that out of the way, job. let's go. Thank you. All right. So at number five, I'll start, and then you go with yours, and then we'll talk about it. And this is number teams, five, right? Teams. We're doing teams okay. right now. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Number, my number five team is the Brazilian Demons Furia. 
I think that they've shown. I was a Furia hater going into this. I didn't think they were going to make top eight. I thought they were a silly team, but they showed me different. They got some big wins when they needed to. They came back from down against Oxygen. They got their revenge on on uh, on Vitality. Mm. Uh, I, I like the way they play, and I think they still have that. They still got like that aura factor where they can just come up on stage and scream and hit clips and just knock you knock you on your your head early, and you don't you never really get your uh, your balance back. But by the time you do, it's over. So yeah, I got Fury. I think they're going to be a, a real real contender in Dallas. They punch early. Really like that team. They're a feast or famine team for me. I think they honestly look best when Lost is the player that they're facilitating for the most. But mm-hmm. you know, I understand that Yan is what he is. So I'll back yeah. off. Do you want my number five? Go ahead. Is this cheating? Are we just doing teams from London? I put Carmine. No, Core. it's going into the. Uh, Oh, not this again. I can't get away from these guys, dude. I can't. I can't with this team. I. It's tough for me. I get it. I understand what happened. So are the world beaters. Um, but I just don't know how. It's very tough for me. I'm trying to do a better job as I mature, Michael, of not being nice. so reactive <laughs> and switching up who's at the top of my list every single time we have results. Carmine Core last season, before this team even came together, I would have had all three of these players probably within the top seven, top eight from what we saw last season. I was super impressed by Atau at the World Championship. And I just feel like if you have that much talent, clearly this roster is not a perfect, cohesive fit with one another. A little bit of a, a square into a circle here and there with what they're trying to do on the pitch. But I think the talent is undeniable. I think they don't really have the same level of pressure that the Falcons of the world have or that Vitality will have to, you know, remain as champions. BDS have been spun out in two straight majors early on in pretty dominated fashion. Um, So I think Carmine Core can kind of sneak in here as dark horse sleeping giants. Um, So I got him at five. I just it's not even about the missed regional for me. They didn't make a regional final. Like like Luna Galaxy, second Luna Galaxy match of this podcast, made a regional final, and Carmen Corp did, right? Yeah. Like Oxygen, who did not look good at the major, made a regional final, and Carmen Corp didn't. Like they just weren't that good this split. And listen, if you want to say, I'm, I'm you know, this is a projection, so I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be as as uh it's not a power rank. If it was a power ranking, I'd be I'd be more I'd be more upset. I'd be, oh you honestly I'd have lost my head, I would have exploded. Um, but, um, you know, I just, I don't see it because here's the thing. Okay. I made a little tier list. Mm. I like to make a little tier list after, before every event, I made a world's tier list and I put, I put Fury and Carmen Corp in the same tier, the third tier. And you know what the tier was called? It wasn't called the A tier last year. You know what it's called? What's that? Definitely could win. Probably will find a way to lose. And Mm. that's how I feel about Carmen Corp because for some reason, this team loves finding a way to lose. Ever since their 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 regional streak got broken, they've just fat. It's not that they haven't been good enough; it's that they find ways to lose. And I I worry more about a team that seems to find ways to lose than a team that like gets bad breaks, right? Like General Mates got a bad break, but General Mates on land has most have mostly just found ways to win. Yeah, Carmen Corp finds ways to lose, and until they show me that they're not going to find ways to lose in these big moments, I can't put them in my top five. The worst case scenario, and of course, like this is like a, a talent vacuum, right? Like Carmine Core, mm-hmm. for me, they're just so good that they deserve a shout. I think that mm-hmm. your tier name is a very apt portrayal of where Carmine Core find themselves. The worst mm-hmm. case scenario is that this team have already decided that this is the yeah. end of the line, that they're yeah. gonna be breaking up and that this they're kind of just mailing this one in. Um, yeah. if that's where they find themselves, then you know, this is just silly. But if we were to take all the scenarios and Carmine core end up being the world champions. I'd be like, yeah, like it's, it's like I said, they can do it. I just, I just don't think they will. <laughs> um, number four for me, uh, I'm going to kind of go back to what you said. I'm not trying to let recency get too into it. Mm-hmm. And I'll explain my reasoning after I got BDS here. I know that the last time we saw them was really bad, but here's my thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. We talked about this in our major predictions a couple episodes ago. The last result for BDS 
does not matter for the entirety of Monkey Moon's career. If you look at the things he's done online versus on land versus like tournament, tournament, zero. There is actually zero like correlation. This man dominated RLCSX, lost the final for no reason. Somehow just, 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 it was over. Comes in, doesn't win a single regional in the fall of 21, 22, wins the major. Okay. Then mm-hmm. wins a regional, comes in, I think is the overall number two seed, beats that Queso team, gets perfect swept by FaZe. Goes into sprint, wins two regionals in the spring major, goes out 06 and double elim to Sam and OCE, wins the world championship. That was his 2021 22 season. So I'm going to bet on the talent of Drawley and Exotic and the, and the experience of, of Monkey Moon. And I'm going to bet that once again, nothing matters that came before it. They win regionals, they go out 16th in the, in the spring, in the last London major, not this one. They went to regionals. This one, they get shellacked by a team that can't make it past top eight in, in domestically. So for me, I'm going to bet on what I see as a team, and I'm not going to worry about results because they're clearly not worried about results. I don't know what it is. They just they got a little bit of a, a stank to them in playoffs. They are a silly team. They're totally a silly team. They're 2-10 in playoff yeah. games this season yeah. in majors. But that's exactly what Monkey Moon would do before he sweeps the world championship. It's true. Like that's, it's, it's just what it is. They 4-1 Vitality and then drop three straight best of sevens to them on land. It makes no sense. It make, He doesn't make any sense. I'm done trying to figure it out. I'm just betting on him. I, for that reason, am not totally mad at the bet. But BDS, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I just we haven't seen it yet, and uh, I hear you. All three of them. They if, have a Canadian too. Is that so? You know, Drali is Canadian. I is that so? That. He uh, is like he has Canadian lineage, but he sure. does represent Morocco and speak French. Mm-hmm. However, to me, he is Canadian. So, because he's just you know, hey, listen, one drop. You know, you got a little bit of it in you. You got all of it in you. That's me. That's that's me and Drawley. We're gonna hang out with Jane Apps later. Actually, I think we're all gonna hang out at the Canadian Rocket League Legends Club that you can only get in if you're a baller. So we'll be there. Any Canadian is full Canadian, I suppose. Type shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just had the NHL uh, uh, the finals. Yeah, that was a tough one for. We brought it back to Ooh, Florida. Back. Yeah, warm weather hockey, man. Jalen, I know you're watching this. It's not cool that ho- that warm weather teams win. I don't care that you got a ring. Anyway, what's your number four? Who's your My number, number four? four let me go back to it. By the way, just before I click off of this, shout out to to shift rle.gg for supplying these stats. Incredible but, uh, stuff. Let me just lay these on you real quick. In S tier, so at majors, best of sevens, so major playoffs. If we are to filter by rating, the worst rating, do you have a guess? I'm curious. Uh, it's got to be juicy. You see, had like a point four in like a, in the semifinal, right? Chronic. Isn't that surprising? It's not though. No, he doesn't perform not, super well. It's not surprising to me. Let I'm me give you. Surprised at all. Let me no give comment. you the next three players in the lowest rating. Is it exotic? Drawly Monkey Moon. Exotic Monkey Moon. <laughs> Which so. is that's crazy too because I saw our shift graphic that we tweeted out. Monkey Moon was fifth overall in rating for the tournament. He was great. So he would have been probably number one if he didn't just throw it all away. Such a monkey moon thing to do. Such a monkey moon thing. Like just dominate the Swiss stage and then, or not really dominate, but hard carry your team in the Swiss stage and then just absolutely bottle it in the top eight. That means he's winning the world championship, I think. Let's keep it French from my number four. We only could do five, so I'm not surprised, Mm -hmm. but I'm kind of surprised that they're not on your list, Team Vitality. Former world champions. Yep. We it got hurts. Alpha on the roster. Radosin was sick. Zen is the best player in the world. Surprised that they did not make your list after, uh, you know, putting up great results, having great statistics, which are are you know you can take them or leave them. But I think um, Pyroblock on on Twitter was putting up Legend. these kind of X Y graphs of how good yeah. offense and defense was and vitality. Great follow, were by the way, go peak follow of powers. Pyroblock X. Yeah. Shout out. So, you know, Vitality across the board, they're checking all the boxes here. Um, I'm surprised that they did not make your list. They just feel like a team who can't win. And it sucks because they have won. But there are teams that I feel like all five teams on my list, I think, can win the world championship. Mm-hmm. And as much as it hurts because I've been riding up with them all season, both Vitality and Gen G just feel like teams that are like, 
oh man, they lost to the the team that won the world championship in top four. It was a seven game series. They they had a three two lead. Like that's just it. The aura. That's the aura they have. And I'm sorry, but the magic's that's not gone. Too much. Yeah, it's well, it's just that they've been around for so so long and they've regressed a little bit. I think individually, Alpha and Radosin, Um, I think they're very Zen centric when they used to not be. Yeah. And um, I think teams just have so much tape on them. It's like I said about G2. Once you have enough tape on a team, you can beat them, uh, even if the talent's different. So that's my theory. What game was it? Was it game three that they won against Furia? Or no, they went down 3 0, oh, right? Yeah. And then Zen just like started doing whatever and then. And yeah, Zen ridiculous. really popped off, like even mm-hmm. like he was animated yeah, he was, he was as like an the, individual. The crowd. I was like, okay, yeah. we still got a little juju here. Um, no, but- he wants it, man. He's special. He's literally the to me like the generational prospect in Rocket League, on and off the pitch, brain mechanics, everything. Like he's going to be so good for so long. I don't know how much longer he's going to be so good with these two, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's pretty clear. That to me, they just don't seem like a team that have the ceiling of a world champion anymore. Who's your number three? I think we have the same number three, correct? Uh, did so let's we just... go... <laughs> I think we might have gone chalk for top three. I think we no, I think we have a different. I want to say we have a different. No, we don't. We have it all top three. Okay, let's talk top three. Okay, okay. our top three. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to list. Do it you want to go one by one, or do you want to list them? Let's just list them all off. Why not? It's, there's no there's no suspense anymore. We got Gentlemates, Bronze, Team Falcon, Silver, G2, Stride, Gold. Yeah, and I think that's unanimous across across the... Uh, I think it's unanimous across the Rocket League verse. I think everyone sees those as the top three teams right now. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, it gets weird. As you've seen, we got four different teams as in our four and five spot. But, I mean, to the the this it's such a styles makes fights thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, m- Gentlemates were playing so fast and Falcons were ready and they were just boom, boom, collision, 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 50, 50, 50, weird bounce score, blah, blah, blah. And then they got to G2 and it was like, slowed it down. Yeah. Everybody slowed it down and they couldn't, okay, come, come on, bring that pressure. Keep working at that boost. Why is Atomic down there while you guys are on offense still in your boost coming back? And then all of a sudden, boom, right? I think G2 struggled with gentle mates in the major one because gentle mates will fu- won't full commit the way the Falcons were, will. But I think, the Falcons are a better matchup for Gentlemates because Gentlemates aren't prepared for another team to just full send it at them the way that the Falcons. A little rock do. paper scissors action. Yes, exactly. And I think all three of them should be considered the top three teams um, to 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 be going. I think they've been the best three teams in the world all season. What about you? I I was blown away. I did my predictions because I, I think we're all contractually obligated to put out a predictions yes. video before major. Shout out happen. to Cody. It's not shout out Cody. It's not really my bag, but I felt like, you know, it's kind of a moment. You got to be there, yeah. you know, and I did not have gentlemates making the playoffs um, just because it seemed like they kind of had lost a little bit of that zip. If Juicy is your MVP and he's not really showing up, I think he was third on the team and goals scored. They really do not score a lot of goals. Mm-hmm. They allow a lot. They are not very demo heavy. They're not very pass heavy. So they you shouldn't kind be of, very good. That's, you that's look just at them. They shouldn't be good. They just are because they have aura. They and do. People say I'm lying, but that Seiko aura, when a major kind of just, and then get your thing and go home, it matters. Mental. Seiko with the you know a seemingly must be quarter million dollar watch that he's rocking <laughs> for all these events. He's a killer man. He's just here to get paid and win, man. Who's no emotion. No emotion, wins a series, yeah. takes out the headset. You know, he's he's very, cool as can very be. Very Jokic esque, I would say. Very he, he certainly is. And then you got Itachi who is animated, who mm. is just, you know, I, I think we might correct the narrative here. And th- this is for the culture of this podcast. So we're gonna correct the narrative on Itachi here in a second. But yeah, he was electric over the course of this event. Top goal scorer. I think he put away mm-hmm. eight in that series against uh, Falcons, or maybe it was against BDS. But it's one of BDS. those, he was cooking against BDS, man. Like almost one hundred percent goal. BDS in the midfield. Yeah, BDS, BDS midfield. The whole for four years has been the best, and he just was like, "Watch this." It was he crazy. really has yeah. come a long way from being constantly on zero boost and out of plays, mm-hmm. just trying to make something out of it. Itachi is that mm-hmm. dude. Juicy clearly has gotten over the kind of ricketiness that he mm-hmm. saw on moist when he was at land that team is not playing um and i don't know yeah. what the secret sauce is maybe it's ever but that team no, comes sure. ready to ball well 
I think too the sort of mental attitude that they have, where you have a sort of like yin yang, and but both of them are very positive. It's like Itachi's not animated and emotional; he's animated, controlled, and he's keeping his guys in it. And Seiko is a rock. You never have to like Juicy for he's young, right? He's seventeen. Mm-hmm. He's got one teammate who's always positive no matter what, and he's got another teammate that looks like nothing phases him. There's yeah. no better environment to be in than having those two guys by your side, at least on during the game. I don't know how it is off the field. For me, I think that what they what, what General Mate showed me is that like they seem to just not play worse on land. Yeah. They just they play the same way. And teams play better online, but they don't play worse on land. Right. Yeah. And I will no longer be doubting them. If they can make it there, goodness gracious, they they always like almost miss it. If they can make it there. It seems like they figured out uh, the exact way to just keep their level and let other teams nerves beat them for themselves. And that's why they can win so many one goal games. Right. Because they're not the ones freaking out and forcing stuff. They're just like, let's play our game. Let's chill out, get our stuff and we're good. Um, to me, I mean, we were one, a goal away from Seiko's fifth final of the open era. Uh, he's probably the most underrated player of this era. He might be the best player of this era in terms of the, the, the resume, not the talent. I mean, he might be there for the talent too. Um, and then we've, we've talked at length about G2 and Falcons. We don't have to do it anymore, but yeah, very clear top three. I feel like it's a shame. Well, it's nice that even if one of those teams run into each other early in the playoffs in, uh, Dallas, oh, no. that there's the hybrid bracket, so we still have a chance. You can to hear see me. All, I think I froze. All three of them make the the championship instead of a a brutal kind of um, quarterfinal loss for one of them. But yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. All right, we've talked about G two and Falcons already. Let's move in. We're gonna let's talk a little bit something a little more fun because teams are boring. They're too like they're too academic. Let's talk about players. Let's talk about hoopers. Let's talk about ballers. We're gonna count down for five again. Give me your top five players, uh, Belair. I'll let you start with your number five player going into the major. All dogs on the list. I really struggled with this more than I'm proud to admit. Um, it, this list is kind of for fun, but I really, I really languished over this. I ended up going first killer. My boy. And they don't have the results. They seemingly don't have the same level of cohesion that you see from these other top teams who are contending. Yet, I still feel like First Killer is one of the most impactful on both ends of the pitch players that we have in the world, um, which some people may not agree with, which is fair. He clearly is taking a different approach and is stylistically asked to do different things with Gen G than he was with FaZe prior to. But I still think First Killer is one of those guys. How do you feel about it? I'm never gonna. I'm never ever gonna discount any FK enjoyment. Okay, mm. that kid is a beast. I thought he was pretty easily their best player. Like I thought he kind of carried them to that top eight. Agreed. Um, and I think if they had won against G two and gotten that match against uh, SSG instead of. G2 getting the mask into SG. Gen G probably gets a top four, and we're probably talking about him as maybe the best player of the tournament. Mm-hmm. I don't have him on my top. He was right, right, like it was between him and my next my next player, or the player I had number five. But I mean, you know, he was the top five player statistically at the event. He was the second best statistical player in North America this whole season. And the whole narrative of the season is that he's not the same guy because he's moved from one to two on the shifts rating points per game list. Yeah. Um, he's a freak. He's a generational talent that will unfortunately probably go down as by far the best player to never win a land. But, um, I mean, he'll never be forgotten in my heart because he's been rocking my world for almost half a decade now. Um, my number five is also a North American player. Um, and it is, uh, L Jesus, LJ, Logan Wilt, the kid, man, this guy is absolutely sensational. I can't. It's like old school NA ball over at SSG. It's one guy, give me the ball, get out of the way, right? And he he got them to a top eight that way. They beat Furia, which is a great win Mm -hmm. uh, for SSG. Um, They almost beat Falcons. You know, he just has something against Mina because he's he's dominated the Twins a couple times and almost beat them at their best best form ever this time. Um, Offensively, I think he is, uh, I think he's one of one as a shooter. Uh, mm-hmm. Personally, you know, there's great shooters. Itachi, we talked about, is a great shooter. Um, I think uh, Beast Mode is really, really underrated as a shooter because he does a lot of stuff great. 
But man, that kid can put the ball in from anywhere and it's always placed and it's always there. I feel like I'm watching V1 Beast Mode again, where it's like everyone's just like, when this guy gets his G2, he's going to be a land winning player. And I don't know if there's another G2 to be found in North America or if he's going to have to import someone. But man, he is uh, he is just a joy to watch. Probably the most exciting player to watch at the land, I'd say. Um, and uh, just, yeah, what a player, man. What a player. So uh, using, you know, traditional terms, athletic on the offensive yeah. end, he can do yeah. so much on the ball. Those musties, like You're whether insane. it's just... He imposes himself so Dude. well. Like as soon he... I think there's a there's a there's value in making yourself feel like a threat. Mm. Like FK, Zen, Ajoyo, Yan. It's like these guys, when they have the ball, the other team, they're alert. Like, oh God, right? We got to make sure we challenge early. We challenge hard. And he mm. just does it with such grace. He, athletics is a great way to put it. He makes it look so easy, but it's it's terrifying for the other team, it seems. Great in transition out of defense. Mm -hmm. I feel like the only, the biggest differentiator for me between FK and LJ is that LJ has a tendency, SSG has a tendency to get a little floppy on the goal line, mm -hmm. a little divey, a little panicked, you know, don't always love that. Mm -hmm. But if he's breaking out in transition, he can go end to end with it. I feel like the solo aerial play is kind of a dying breed because nowadays, mm -hmm. if you don't get ball, just you, goes just, up. Yeah. you hit the player, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to leave it for a teammate. But he's one of the last few who, if he's on the ball and gets his reset, he can beat two and put it away. He's just mm -hmm. so nasty. All the angles, all the plays uh not mad at lj at all let's go to four and now i believe we're kind of alternating a bit yeah right? we're just we're switching yeah so my number four is itachi mm -hmm. we talked about him at length um just very prime monkey moon-esque you know he's so willing to just make the right play every single time uh he clearly so believes in chat like controlling the midfield to be winning the game controlling the boost to win the game it's very smart it's very cerebral but it's also hyper aggressive i think mm -hmm. we think of smart cerebral players we think of like an extra or like a daniel who was typical where it's like you know it's kind of slower likes to take their time likes to play angles but the, the itachi way of being cerebral is like i am going to make your life as difficult as possible in the most efficient way possible for five minutes at a time and you're going to you're not going to be able to deal with it so you just got to strap in and pray i miss my shots or i over commit once or twice um i think he makes it like monkey moon used to and still kind of does from time to time um he makes it almost impossible to beat them four times right and we've seen it on land you literally almost impossible to beat them four times on land because he's constantly just imposing himself on you we talked about that with lj but he does it in a different way and I, I've loved watching him. Consummate professional, always seems to make his teammates better, can mm -hmm. be impactful on the ball, off the ball, defensively, in the midfield. Um, you know, he doesn't always, uh, you know, how Tatum, it's like he can have a bad shooting night, but he's going to lock mm -hmm. you up defensively or be impactful mm -hmm. with his physicality. If Itachi doesn't have it going, uh, from like a stat standpoint, he can still always be impactful. Um, yeah, and totally. you kind of know what you're getting from him at a consistent clip. And at these top levels, consistency is one of the first words that's important. So uh, that's uh, that's why uh, he may or may not make my list as well. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. So who, who's your number four, though? TRK. Mm -hmm. I, coming into this event, thought that we were going to walk away thinking Rawas was a top three player in the world, which I still think is in play. I think mm -hmm. Rawas didn't really get be, wasn't really able to show how impactful he can be and how he's developed offensively. We've always known what he can do on the defensive end of the field, but I think he's really grown and flourished offensively. But TRK man, like old guard or whatever, he has still got it. He is the king of the fifties now. He knows how to strike. He never gets demoed, which I think is kind of one of those rare qualities where like if mm -hmm. your team isn't getting demoed very often, it makes calming easier. It makes rotations easier. And you keep your boost. Yep. Great. Great at keeping boost. Great at stealing boost. He's at the top mm -hmm. of those charts as well. So really, really impressed with TRK showing over the course of this event. Yeah, I'd agree. I think I'm a little bit more impressed, though. Mm. I think I'm a little more impressed than you were. I'm not going to lie. Hey, because... I've, I've laid it out. Because I got TRK at number three, 
Um, I was like you, but with Rawas. I'm oh, sorry, with Kaleers. Okay. I was like, if I had to make an all RLCS team, I know they talked about them first touch, so I was thinking about it. It would have been for the regular season, at least leading up to then, Zen, B, Smoke, Kaleers. I think they were the wow. three best players of the season. Um, but, uh, and it's funny. I remember when I was at the World Championships in Dallas um, two years ago, mm-hmm. I was doing covering it for Shift. I had a conversation with Mr. Johnny Boy. Uh, and I asked him who he thought the best player in the world was. And he said, well, it's gotta be between Yan, TRK, Beast Motor, Vatira. And it's like, we have this idea that things like change so fast, but like you make a top 10 list now and all four of those guys are in like what the top seven. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe we're not moving as fast as we once were. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, he is, like you said, he does everything fundamental at such a high level. He's one of those players, very similar to first killer where the, they they have that flashy sort of pop-off, like mechanical side to them, and it almost overshadows how good they are at the little things. Yep. Um, I think, you know, my boy over at the School of Rocket League has a fantastic video on both of them, and he both kind of talks about the sort of little things they do that make themselves just not just like a like a Yan or an AJ, right? Yep. More more than that. Um, and I think when you do the little things so well, it allows you to perform in the biggest moments because that's muscle memory. You don't have to think about the margins if you're always filling them in. Um, so yeah, I'm, he was the third best player at the event to me. I think he's the third best player in the world going into the championship, world championships. And even to, to, if I could put a finer point on that, just a snapshot of how good TRK was, he does the things that you can't teach. Like I think in that game seven, he got the dunk on Seiko Mm -hmm. on the goal line with like 15 seconds left. And Mm -hmm. then he puts away the overtime, like the long strike could have easily not made one of those. And the result for Falcons and the way we talk about them shifts completely. So he has the ice. Yeah, totally love a clutch demon, but yeah, you stole my pick for this one for your number three. We're just trading back and forth. Yeah, I got, I got a Tachi. What more can we say? Um, I, 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 I personally, maybe I'm in the minority here. I really like the default Fennec, you know, that kind of Matt Brown that yeah. he was, that he was pulling out. Drolly was on it. Jack was on it. Atachi looked the best on it. So I think it's his car now. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was blown away by his ability to score. I feel like he's a great floor setter and a great general, but um, we don't often see him flash the scoring that mm-hmm. frequently um, like he was able to do here. So I feel like you already re- put a really fine point on it. So I'll stay uh, short on my praise of Itachi, who was just awesome yeah. this event. It's it's tough to be a scorer and a controller, right? Mm. It's tough to be a floor. Oh, another basketball reference. This is my favorite episode that we've ever done. <laughs> it's tough to be a you know. It's not a, not everyone can be James Harden. Not every some people. You, people are usually eighteen and ten or thirty and seven. There, mm. It's hard to be thirty and ten, and he was thirty and ten easy every single game uh, in terms of his ability to keep everything in line, make sure Seiko wasn't going to get overwhelmed in the back. Uh, and make sure that he was putting stuff away that Juicy was giving him. So all, all praise to Itachi. So what I want to do for this last one is we have the same second and first, but they're inverted. I'm pretty sure everyone listening knows who those two people are. If Correct. you don't know, they're Beast Mode and Zen. I have Zen number one. Bel Air has Beast Mode number one. Mm-hmm. So I want to hear your case for Beast Mode as the best player in the world over Zen. And then I will tell you the, my case for Zen. I think if I'm going to be short about it, best player best team kind of is is where i landed so it's like an Um, mvp type thing you know like i i think he certainly deserves consideration but if somebody has a strong argument for zen i'm all ears i think beast mode showed that he on a on a team of all stars was the most impactful of those and Mm -hmm. i feel like the results that we've seen over the course of the season and him being the most impactful player basically throughout in, in my opinion maybe you know here or there daniel shun flashes atomic shun mm-hmm. flashes it's beast mode's team so that's kind of where i i landed there i tried to not overthink it yeah so i actually think the same thing in terms of the logic but over the span of senses and joined yes rocket league the rlcs i should say not rocket league yeah where it feels like yes they at that point this season drawly was the best player in europe mm-hmm. at a point this season Atachi or Juicy or Seiko was the best player in Europe. Um, but I feel like, you know, when we actually did this exercise when I was on your podcast like a year ago. 
if I gave if I was an org and I came to you and I gave you a blank check and I said sign whoever you want I want to build the best team I can buyout fees I don't care contract fees I don't care spend it the first person you're calling is done yeah and I love beast mode beast mode is the second person you're calling I don't think anyone would would deny that maybe Drawley maybe if you're a EU fanboy you pick Drawley but um, I think he the the like I said the intangibles off the field off the court off the field sorry I'm just so excited to talk ball. <laughs> Um, the intangibles off the field, yeah. Uh, the the leadership, the ability to play multiple roles, the mechanics, the creativity. Like, I genuinely think, and this is not the, me disres- trying, to be, trying to be disrespectful to Alpha and Radosan. They're very good players. I genuinely think if you put like any other player on that team, except maybe Beast Mode, who I think has proven to be a hard carry at times for for players who may not have been at the level that they were performing at without him. I, th- I don't know if this is a major team in Europe. Like if I if you told me Drawley was going to be starting the season on Vitality and Zen was going to be on BDS, I would tell you that I think BDS is going to win every LAN and I think Vitality will be somewhere with Oxygen, right? And Drawley's the best young player in Europe, best rookie in Europe. Um, to me, his he has, set, he has set a new standard in the same way that Justin did, in the same way that Krenovi did, in the same way that Monkey Moon did at one point. Mm-hmm. And I'm not willing to move off him until somebody like if Beast Mode goes into the best player of the World Championship, best player at Esports World Cup, then I'll be like, okay, I think he's past him for now. But my final NBA comp and the most accessible one that I'll make in this is like 2015, 2016. Steph Curry might have been better than LeBron James, but LeBron James was still LeBron James. And when it mattered, it was still LeBron James. I and to you. me, Zen is lebron james like he is just the best player and i think he cares about being the best player and i think he cares about winning so much that i think eventually he'll just be back up there and then there'll be another player that has a great event we'll be like well is he better than zen and if he's the benchmark he's the best player right if like that's that's my that's my argument i think that's a productive exercise to think about it like if you were to take this player and then put them with two let's call them average players just nameless yeah. average players whoever replacement that is level players yeah replacement level players who would have the best team mm-hmm. i feel like you're probably right it's probably zen like beast See, mode this is, is why i like up. having you on my, my my other co-host would never just be like that was a really good idea they'd be like waffling cringe what's this guy talking about but see this is why this is you know what i'm making a call i'm making because the ends better stay in england you know this is great i get i get told i'm right <laughs> This is fantastic. I'm talking about basketball. This is the best. This is the best thing ever. It's incredible. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, it's no. We're it's, we're like a Bill Simmons podcast. <laughs> we're just talking ball. I'm just telling you everything you're saying is correct. This is excellent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So top five. I'm gonna recite mine quickly, and then you can as well. I have LJ at five. I have Itachi at four. TRK at three. Uh, Beast mode at two, and Zen at one. Yeah, and I had first killer at five, TRK at four, Itachi at three, Zen at two, and Virtuoso at one. Dude, I just missed that. I completely forgot. He did. He was the eighth. Hot, he was the eighth player in shift rating. You know, so that's is that so? Yeah, he was eighth overall. Uh, actually, above uh, first killer, I believe. No, for first killer was top five. He was above Beast Mode. Beast Mode was tenth. So well, he's not yes. very good. So <laughs> yeah. exactly. I'm glad you're seeing it. So quickly, before we get into speed taking, we wrap this up. I want to talk about the FIFA E World Cup and a very, very exciting thing. We've been talking about this for a long time as a community, a sort of World Cup where you represent your nation. This is Mm -hmm. different than the eSports World Cup. That's a club competition. The FIFA E World Cup, it hasn't been announced where it's going to be, but it has been announced it's going to be a LAN. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be online qualifiers for each nation to send their best three players based on the ones that were selected. It's going to be super fun. I will be I will be hopefully receiving a J Naps Team Canada jersey. That's all I really want from this. Oh, to be man. honest with you, I'm going to wear it. Everyone wear it to the club. I told my friend I was like I'm going to wear a Drufinho jersey, Brazil jersey to the club and just tell everyone he's a midfielder and everyone's going to believe me. They'd it's be going like, to be yeah. great. No, I love yeah, him. I totally love yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, this is, he rocks. Um, but yeah, so I feel like there's five big countries that we think about that could actually win this thing: uh, France, England from Europe, and then. USA, um, Saudi Arabia, and Brazil. Mm -hmm. But each country kind of has a team that will probably compete together and bet on that they're either that they have the best three players or that their chemistry will put them over other kind of like compilations of random players. And I think for me, it's Oxygen, 
for England, mm-hmm. right? Because Oski can compete as an English player. Uh, Vitality for France, actually the only all French team in this whole French thing. Yeah. Um, because uh, Jolly is Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And he's also Moroccan, so he's I not. Know, French. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's Canadian. <laughs> but yeah, he'll be competing with Jane Apps and Squishy, Prime Squishy. Excellent. Uh, we're going to win. What about um, Sosa? Sosa's not on the team? He's going to be our sub, and oh, he'll that's... be doing Double Tap Playground while we're winning the event. That's a good spot. Um, I'm going to go. Uh, and then we, yeah, we have obviously Furia Falcons in G2 for the US, Brazil, and Saudi Arabia. So my question to you, and we're going to go through a little quick exercise. If you had to pull up with a team of players from that nationality to like try to beat that team and all their chemistry and their play styles and the fact they're going to have, you know, so much precedent, what would that roster be? So we'll go through, we'll start off with the least fun one, uh, France. Yeah. Um, I'm, I went ahead. So my kind of thing when going through this was that I wanted to take two thirds of a team and just add somebody. Cause I think that's easier for continuity. So okay. all of my, all of mine, except for, I believe, England, are two-thirds of a team, and then you add a third. So my team, very, very simple, is you take uh, you take the world-beating regional team in BDS. Uh, you take the uh, this year's BDS, sorry, that's one, two regionals. You take the LAN finals BDS team of last season. You squish them together, take Exotic, Seiko, Monkey Moon, three LAN winners, three legends of this game, two of the... Th- four best open era players. I think that they could beat Vitality. I think they would beat Vitality because there's some continuity on both ends. That's an excellent team. This is where the caveat that I gave earlier about not wanting to copy your homework really comes into play because <laughs> I probably would have had a lot of the same rosters you do. I think we still have mm-hmm. overlap. Um, but I, in an endeavor to not do exactly what you did, got to start with Monkey Moon. Yeah. And then I went, Juicy and Vatira. I'm just thinking a little it's bit of everything. Two different teams, though, like in terms of like the the kind of like play style, right? I feel like they would be a lot. Different. I would be so worried about Monkey Moon, Vatira, and Juicy. That team is like so like all in or so bad. Like yeah, but I think you'd have to convince Vatira to go back to like being Queso Vatira, where he that's was what like I'm saying. Regen. That's what I'm saying. Because then you're just the Falcons, right? You have like a midfielder, an attacker, and a defender, which yeah. that could work. But I think, yeah, my team is more just straight up like we're going to play like BDS and we're just going to pray that beats Vitality. Ton of cohesion, like your team way yeah. more than mine. Yeah. The problem is, is I also have Monkey Moon and Seiko who seemingly could not get away from each other faster after the season ended. So mm-hmm. we're going to pretend that that didn't happen, that they're all, they've, I'm sure they've kissed and made up. It's all you know, kumbaya. Sometimes it's got to be a way. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll hold with that. Um, let's move on to England. We'll finish the Europe, Europe ones. Sure. Um, I actually changed this one and did copy your homework. And here's I saw why. that because I originally had Appjack, Rise, and Resi because I was like, I feel like Nolly's the obvious answer, but that's kind of a weird like w- like where the roles are. And then like I was in the bathroom at work today, and I remembered that there was a land that Nolly and Rise played together in the summer, and they just whooped Vitality, and I was like, oh, that makes that they're fine. Sure. So I added it. We had the same one here. I think that's fine. There's a pretty obvious top six in England mm-hmm. uh, in terms of players. Three of them play for one team. So I think uh, I, w- I would agree. I think this team would just be, to be honest with you, terrorist ball. I think Ooh. that they would just be challenging constantly. And I think it allows Jack to go back to his you know natural position of a kind of ones focused uh, mechanical player uh, away from the sort of first man that he's been. But I think they would just be a mess to play against. Very Gentlemates-esque, actually, I think. Yeah, this would be a messy play style. This mm. would be a physical, like, this is one of those teams that it's like, Brexit you, might, ball. you might ball. you might beat us, but, like, you're going to hate to play us. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're going to be banged up after this series. Yeah, no, night before, you got to know you got to play this team. You're just, like, sitting up, like, oh, this is going to be awful. Terrible. I can't wait for this to be over. Yeah, totally. So we don't have to talk about that one too much. Like I said, pretty clear top six European players. Uh, I mean, sorry, top six English players, Freudian slip. Um, and, uh, yeah, that would actually be quite fun. I can't believe only three of the players, Oxygen or those three, get to go to this, but it is what it is. Um, do you want to stay on that side on. of the pond? Yeah, yeah, let's do Saudi. What do, you, what do you got for Saudi? Because we got a little difference here. Nobody's beating Falcons. I yeah. think we can yeah, we could start there. But, you know, let's just for fun, 
Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking in the same way that you went cohesion in France, like previous cohesion. Mm-hmm. Um, if if I can go first, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Nalpo, I feel like you kind of got to start there. How can he not yeah. be on this team? Um, he's played alongside Ahmad, and right now Ahmad plays with Mawson. That's my three. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, I so I changed Ahmad for S- SMW. I don't know if, how you say his name. Fair enough. Um, and But I kept Nupo, and I kept uh Mawson mm-hmm. just because um like I said I wanted to make this as realistic as possible did not seem like that rule one team ended very well uh not sure if Ahmad would like to play with Nupo again mm-hmm. um but I also think this team I, I was thinking about maybe putting Venom here um actually you no know, I'm gonna do that just because I would like us to have different ones I'll allow it uh Moss and Moss uh, sorry SNW's kicked Mawson is on. Actually, no, Mawson's kicked. I'm going to bring in Venom here because SMW is very much a defensive player in the vein of Rawas. Um, Venom is like just Mina Rettles. Like he just chases all game. And Nupo is, you know, give me the ball and get out of the way. Uh, there's a little bit of a play style clash with Venom and Nupo because they both need a lot of boost to do what they want to do. But I think like Ma- Venom has gotten better over time and why anything's results have gotten better at kind of doing what he does on low boost. Um, but I think this is just kind of a discount Falcons team. It is. It's, <laughs> like, it's budget Falcons. Like, yeah. So, and then you just kind of pray they have a bad day and Nupo does a, has a Nupo day. Um, on the field, of course, not off the field. We don't want him to have a Nupo day off the field. Um, oh but yeah, so that, that's our, I think the best shot, but as Mina regionals have shown, there's nobody that's beating this team. I um, think, um, you, you know, like Duolingo, it like gets harder as you try to learn the language. <laughs> I feel like if you're like an, an inboard RLCS fan, like the mm-hmm. final chapter should be like saying Mina names Mina out loud. Names. Yeah. Trying to figure out if the, my thing is, do the numbers all mean the same like vocal intonation or do they change? That's a good you know, question. Like Mawson, like that, like yeah. is that all the sevens or does, do sevens mean different things? Who else, who um, else even falls within uh, Talem? I don't D7, think. Seven. D7, D7-O-O-M is the Falcons coach. I don't know how to say his name. I'll figure Doom. that out. We'll get back to you on a few other ones. Yeah, Doom. But I don't know if it's yeah. like or something like that. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Thank you for showing up to, to be a journalist. Today's podcast sponsored by Duolingo. So <laughs> yeah. glad we could. Dude, that was a very brutal, organic dude. ad. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll figure it out and we'll come back next time we have you on. We'll, we'll break that down. We'll break down um, how to speak Arabic. That Perfect. would be pretty cool. Oh, I'm that's glad what they that come here for. Dude. That's exactly what you should call on my expertise yeah. for. Yeah. That, that, listen, you'll see two guys like us. What's the first thing you think? Those guys are fluent Arabic. Those guys know what's yeah, up. They yeah, know, they know what they're talking about. But let's yeah. move on to the... To the oh, we'll do USA last because I think that's the one that has the most variance in like the final player. Yeah. Um, let's do... Um, Brazil. This one's fun because there's actually a lot of players. There are like that could be because they've actually all kind of beaten Furia, right? Complexity's yeah. beaten Furia. Uh, Team Seekers beaten Furia, or they didn't beat them, but they got farther than them. And then Nip beat Furia. So it's mm-hmm. like it's kind of fun. There's actually a lot of different combinations. Um, but yeah, what's yours? I wanted to pick and kind of spotlight the depth of talent and not mm-hmm. and not double dip into any of these teams. And I also wanted to go like veteran talent. They know mm. Furia. They're not intimidated by Furia. They can kind of slow things down and, and kind of beat them at their own game, knowing what they're trying to do. So I went Astromic, mm-hmm. who I guess now is officially nice. Astro. He's no mm-hmm. longer Astromic. We've dropped the Mick from the from the name. He's because he's not Mickey Mouse, man. Unbelievable. No more I Mick. Even, I didn't even consider that. And then KV1. Yeah. Got to have KV1 on the roster. Really. Yeah upped his offensive prowess over the course of mm-hmm. this season, formerly just a defensive mastermind. And then I dug deep. I grabbed Royalis. This is a good pick. I like from this W7M. One. This yeah. Facilitator. He has been someone who has fostered a lot of the upcoming talent that we now see mm-hmm. that have diverted to other great teams. He was, you know, he had Wisty under his wing for a while before yeah. he was yes. gripped by Diaz as well. Um, so him and Astro have done a lot of talent development. They need like a lifetime achievement award, but when they retire or something, they both have developed talent. KV one has been mm-hmm. developing. If you get mm-hmm. two of them, this is a development sandwich. We're about to see. It's like KV one. 
you're like buffing. You're like adding buffs to KV1, like make him into Daniel. He's got know? two. He's got two supports <laughs> yeah. that are just feeding him. Yeah. So I actually going to change it because you made me think of one, but I'm not going to take any of your players. Okay. I wanted to do the two plus one thing, but I thought of a better team. Okay. Starting off with Swift because I believe that you need a Swift sort of like like yeah. peak to beat Furia. You need someone mm-hmm. who can come on and just like go aura for aura with Yan and Lost. Yep. I'm um, also going to keep KV1. Okay. Because actually I lied. No, no more KV1. Okay. I'm going to keep Mata instead because I need that. Oh, you're going I really young. That. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with Mata because I I need that pop off. I need two guys who can really really like go mechanical with those players cuz that's how the Sam team likes to push. Mm-hmm. And in the middle, I got the best support player in Sam that's not named Rafinho. I'm taking AJG. Oh Everyone's yeah. Everyone's forgot about AJG. Dude, but he's listen, so nasty. But like we were talking about complexity as like top 5, top 6 in the world with CRR, Raze Bull, AJG. Now I got Swift, Mata, AJG. I just remade complexity. Literally just remake complexity. You got two players who love to push the pace, who love to get active on the mechanical end, who love to score. And I got AJG just making things happen in the middle, keeping every everything in order. Uh, I think this team in real life should actually happen, even though I'd probably p- pick a different player. I'd probably put KV1 there instead of uh, Mata, but I wanted to keep it fully different than yours. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this is like a team that actually would be really good at like outside of it. That if like, yeah. they team together, they'd be a top team in Sam. Um, and it's realistic, so... I just gave some org a free idea loud if you want to stay in after Esports World Cup. You know, any of those big Brazilian orgs, MIBR, come come, come to me. I'll show you what a good team looks like. Hit up, uh, Michael. Yeah. Is there AGG, anybody... Swift. Real quick, has, has anybody's legacy been sullied more than AJG missing the open net? You know what? It's kind of his fault. Not for missing, but for teaming with a Spanish player. Because that just happens to Spain. I don't know what it is about those players, but they love to find a way to lose in the worst way possible. You were that talking about... team? Man, go ahead. That complexity team suffered so many gruesome L's this year. That yeah. year. That last year. 3-2 up on phase to make the grand final in San Diego. 3-2-1 up with a wide open shot to win the series against Vitality in Boston. 3-2 up twice against Liquid and Carmine, choke both. And then, you know, it hasn't really been great since for that org. But, yeah, no, AJG, he needs his shot. And I think teaming up with these guys is going to be special stuff. I'm excited know. to see it in real life now that we've spoken yeah. it into existence. Totally. We're so back. Um, also, I'm going to actually have to – I just realized something. AJG is not Brazilian. So I'm actually going to put uh, K- KP1 sure. back in there. <laughs> And I was like, why didn't I think of AJG? We were That's real excited why. about it. But listen, AJG, if you find a way, you know, you know, Argentina not looking too great from like a lifestyle standpoint right now. Just head over there, head over there to um to Brazil and maybe get one and we can make this happen. Anyway, so actually I'm stealing one of your players, KB1, Mata, Swift, my original team. Uh, let me let me have that and we'll go to the USA. Wow, Finish I can't believe we just the... talked about that for so long and I was just completely wrong. That's I was awful. right there with That's you. I was so good. excited I didn't even no, think about it. No, because the idea just took over my head and I was like, this is going to rock. And then uh, he, he wasn't born in Brazil. Who's a wick? Ah, That's stupid. These Anyways. Rules. Yeah. All right, stupid. the Bald yeah. Eagle. We need to have a global village. The Bald Eagle. Um, so I, I follow the two plus one on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to take Genji and put LJ on there. I feel like that's like the best team you could make uh, with at least existing chemistry. I don't think I have to explain it much. They're a great team, Genji. They've beaten G2 before. Um, no disrespect to Jack. I feel like LJ is a little bit better than him now. I'm not sure how the play style would be, but I'm just going to go balls to the wall and hope that we can figure something out by the time we have to see those boys. I think that would be a very mechanical team that mm-hmm. I would worry a ton about defensively. I yeah. went first killer, LJ, two-piece. Possibly mm. one of the best facilitators that, in North that's America. Such a, that's a team I want to see, though. Like, Me too. I, you, kinda, you won this round, I think. Thank you very much. And you know what? <laughs> that that if, if we could have like a four-man roster, if you were to combine yeah. the four players that we have, like you got the chronic and two-piece synergy from back in the day, yeah. First killer and chronic now, LJ and two piece kind of coming in where you need them. Well, they play yeah, different they styles. Were, they were, uh, I think they played a little twos together too. So yeah, be a good. Team. Yeah, no, that's like the that's the group, right? That's the non G two group of players. I feel like everyone's yeah. like if they can, that's like the next tier. There's down. your that's your seven right there. 
I would love for Mist to still be Mist because I feel like if I could get LJ, FK, Mist, like that's just phase, but like with a better sip, I think we could probably probably take down him as long as FK and, and Mist could play together again, but mm. he's just not who he used to be. I miss my demon, my demon goal line, North American savior. He used to just carry us in all these lands. Brutal. Nick Costello. Yeah, demon. Uh, he won't be forgotten in my head. Just know that. I'll never forget him. Um, but yeah, let's move on. That was fun. I feel like there's a lot of actual realistic rosters except for the one with AJG. And I'm really excited to see this happen. I think it's going to be like a lot of a lot of fun. I agree. Are we finishing with some speed taking? Is this a three hour we podcast are. yet? Uh, we're we're pulling up on about two hours, I think. Uh, I mean, we had some we did have some tech difficulties. So we did probably around an hour 40, but usually three of us make an hour 40. So right. we have been yapping. You got to get uh, the people what they want, you know? Yeah, exactly. They want me to talk more, and they don't want Jens and Hootie to talk, so this is going to be the best episode, yeah. I think. I'm Lou Will um, off the bench. I'm coming in. I'm taking 15 shots. We're just, we're just, this is like Rudy it's, Gay and Lou Will and the Raptors. Oh, my we're not, We might not be winning, but we're having fun, and we're shooting. Uh, that gave my body a tingle. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about, we're going to do speed taking. You guys know how speed taking works. Taking it from the shift cord, which the link actually works now in our YouTube channel. Please go down below and join the shift cord. You can post takes and we will maybe talk about you and call you stupid or correct. Um, we're going to, uh, we'll go back and forth, you and me. Uh, Belair, I'm going to start off by giving you one. Atomic is the third best player in the open era behind Monkey Moon and Seiko. This one's from Trucus and Fruit. Uh, they kind of like went back and forth and kind of responded to each other about this, but their take together combined to this. I like it. Um, I think he's kind of, it's, it's so funny how it feels like Seiko and Atomic are both very understated while also mm -hmm. just winning throughout. Like neither of them not have anime like, gifts. Not that's not what it anime is. Gifts on Twitter. Yeah. That's what it is. But um, I, you know, the results speak for themselves. They've both been mm -hmm. incredible. Both have showed the ability to be a first banana. Both can be a second banana, uh, kind of what the team needs. But at the end of the day, they just find a way to win. And uh, I think uh, I think Atomic has had the good fortune of having four incredible teammates. Wait, five incredible teammates. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like I'd agree. Because you can have good teammates, but you have to still win. You do. And he's, you know, throughout Envy to Heat to G2. Yep. He's been, every time you give him a roster good enough to win, he's winning. And there's a lot of players that great, get great rosters and they make finals or they, they win regionals, but they don't win the big one. And he's proven more than anyone else in North America. If you give him the team, he'll get you a ring. And that's yep. all you can ask for from a player. Mm-hmm. Am I giving right, you one? You fire me over. Yeah, fire me over. We'll just go back and forth. Okay. This is from Reese. SSG have a better chance at making top four at the World Championship than Gen G. This is such a Reddit take. It's insane. <laughs> this is people do this every year with teams where they're like, "Here's this team with like inferior results, but like, like if I think about it hard enough, maybe I can see a world where it happens, mm -hmm. and I feel really smart saying it." No. Gen G has been better than Space Station all year. Space Station has outplaced Gen G once all season. And Gen G looked pretty good and lost to the Falcons, who looked better than everybody. I love SSG. I love LJ. I love Hawk. I love Chicago. I love, I love Sad Jr. Sad Jr. is my dog. He's Canadian and he's amazing. He's two things I love. They're not better than Gen G. They're, they're one dimensional in a way that Gen G are not. They're not going to be better. I'm sorry. Who who was uh, SSG didn't make the first major, and a big reason for that was they kept running into, into some team. <laughs> that's right. That's who it was. I, I didn't know. It, the it's only so advantage that SSG have are a coach, and that's not disrespect to Chrome. I just believe in Sad Junior a lot, and we literally saw Sad Junior go into Chrome's job. Whatever. Um, I will. Here's mine for you. This one is from Mop World's Grand Finals should be a best of three of best of fives. I immediate take, love it. If I thought right. it through, maybe I'd feel different about it, but like as like a, a Rocket League purist, like mm -hmm. let's really see the results. More mm -hmm. games, best of sets, that's very exciting to me. 
I know mm -hmm. that it's an impossible sell because you're trying to capture the casual fans and you can't really take up that much time. And there's a bunch of logistical reasons as to why extending in this way is not very possible, but I would love a best of set to be like, all right, mm -hmm. you kind of get a couple bites at the apple. You can take an extended time out to try and settle things in. It feels mm -hmm. like you're kind of getting more accurate results um, no. in, in this fashion. I would love. And it makes the sets. finals feel more important. I'd yes. be happy for the entire for like championship stunt there to be like a, a semifinals day of best of three, best of fives, and then mm -hmm. a final of best of three. I think best of three, best of sevens is too much. I don't think you should have to win eight games yeah. to, to win a, a thing, but six feels nice. Six is much more than four mm -hmm. and you still, and then you break it up. So you can like, you know, you can win seven games, you win seven games and lose. Like you really have to, um, you really have to, 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 to like, it's just a perfect balance. I'm a big fan. I actually hint. I talked. We talked about that when we interviewed Cloud Fuel. I said I thought that would be the best way to like make matches feel more important. It's just that the BS, the best of sevens were too long to do a best of set. I agree. I think so. It's good that we're both. We we both think that that is a mm -hmm. good take. Um. Okay. Is it? <sighs> Cliss. I've seen. Is it Cleese? I've Let's seen. Just say Cliss. We'll say Cliss. But I I think I've seen this individual in in Hootie's twitch twitch streams but probably if g2 Hoodie's had run famous he is man that's the only reason i was kind of bummed out the only reason i decided yeah. to come on the pod was i, I thought pump fakes. he's he was never i'd coming. be able to talk to hootie but you know yeah. i take what i can get um <laughs> if g2 had run into gentle mates in bracket they would have lost um maybe like i said i think their the gentle mates matchup is better than the falcons one but the falcons also spanked g2 yeah like I think G2 was on a mission that day. I think Beastmo was on a mission that day, but I really do think that the, the gentlemate style is, is an issue for G2 mm -hmm. and the way G2 want to play because they're cool to just sit there in the midfield and just like pressure you kind of half in, half out, not overcommit too much until uh, you run out of boost and then they'll just punish. So maybe, like I don't want to fence it, but I think they had a better chance in Falcons for sure. I don't know if they would have lost because... Like, I don't know if you saw Beast Mode in that semifinal, but he was playing out of his mind. Daniel was a freak in the final. So yep. um, I think they would have had a better shot for sure. All right. All right. For you, this take is, I mean, we, we talked about this earlier, but I guess more in a defining. Uh, this current G2 roster, this is from Vern, by the way. This current G2 roster will be considered a top three roster of all time by the time they're finally over and done with. This isn't just NA. This is all time across the whole world, every region, Europe, MENA, all those places. I'm not mad at it. I mean, if they continue at this kind of clip, like if this isn't like if this isn't the top of the mountain and we're actually mm -hmm. kind of seeing a couple rivets here, um, it's kind of hard to argue against it. I mean, I kind of blew some of my stats here at the beginning and trying to prepare for this, but I think with them winning 71% of their games, 45 and eight on the season, even if you compare them to some of the great teams that we've seen before, they already have a better record. The fact that they've been able to win a major that they've made every single grand finals in North America, who is kind of depleted since this team stole all of the best players. But the fact that they've been able to dominate a top region that they have been to been able to overcome, um, you know, making it to both grand finals and are now the favorites heading into the world championship. If they win the world mm -hmm. championship, I mean, you know, you, you have already done what vitality did last season, plus being dominant over the yeah. totality of a season. Um, yeah. So. I think you look at dig like the OG dig team, mm -hmm. Panda turbo K -Dop. You look at RLCS, X to like tw like world championship BDS, so that Seiko BDS, Mark, yep. that whole era. I think that's number one because it was two years, only one roster change. I feel like that is like the defining best team. And then you got Dig second. I'd probably put last year's Vitality third because they we never seen like an extended period of dominance at a level like that. Just killing everybody. Um, like because as good as Dig were, they didn't have to play the teams that vitality had to play incredible teams and just made them look silly mm -hmm. um way smaller sample size on those yeah, old teams but too. i yeah so i think g2 to they got to win the world championship to get up there but once they're up there i think that another season of greatness can actually put them 
I'm gonna put them like number one maybe. yeah but my my, my yes yeah. excuse me my yes was through the understanding of them winning yeah. the world championship yeah. if they don't win the world okay. championship still a great team but if they can yeah. do that then we're really talking totally all right put me put, put the last one on me is this me for you all right uh this yeah. is from vesper the fifa e i love fifa e fifa fifa rocket FIFA. league world cup will not feature super teams but primarily the best teams of each existing nationality um i mean we just talked about that mm-hmm. uh i think if we look at the teams we made after doing that exercise i think vitality probably loses maybe like i think vitality has the best chance of losing the other three team well i think also england is the one team where i think the existing great team could most likely break up if, if rise and joy will want to just like run it back one more time and grab oski or grab nolly or jack or any of those other four players yeah um, but if all let's say all five stick together, I think France and England have the best chance. I think there's almost zero chance that the USA, Saudi, and Brazil, even though the USA and the Brazilian teams will be good, I don't think that they're going to be better with all the continuity that Furia and G2 have. Obviously, I don't think Falcons have comp. They haven't been shown to have comp. And then, I, so I think outside of Vitality, if all five of those teams play as the national their national kind of entrance in the qualifiers, um, I think... Well, major at least see sixty percent of them. May, most likely, I'd say eighty, and then maybe a hundred percent. So yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Where um, so is it those five? Where where does uh, Morocco go for you? Uh, they're Drally just like Nass. the team that everyone's everyone's gonna be like, man, you gotta watch out for Morocco. You know, everyone's gonna be like, I'm very smart. I think Morocco's gonna go top two, uh, and they could. But um, I think you look at. I mean, Spain is cursed. There's cursed. We were talking about the other day. Uh, Spain players played. There are four regions. Mm -hmm. Spain had players in four regions this year. NA, SAM, uh, SSA, and EU. Zero players are going to the world championship that are from Spain. Like they just are. That's a cursed region. They just find. They. they, I don't know what happened there, but they do. Them and success in Rocket League just does not seem to get along. Um, so I don't believe in them. Australia should be fun. I always want to watch power. I love my OCE after dark. Um, mm. So I'll be happy to see them there. Uh, assuming that they're the ones. Um, yeah. So I, I think Morocco is definitely, I think I would put Morocco like right on par with like England, Brazil. I think the USA, France and Saudi are, are a tier above, but I think they're right there with them. Morocco, Depends on Nats, really. Morocco are the Knicks of the RLCS. Yes. Yeah. It's like, hey. Well, it's it's up to Nas, right? Yeah. Like, if he goes out top eight again, you know, which is really, 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 really possible. If this is like a Swiss, I don't know, man. He's got to figure something out. But he's gonna have better teammates than he did on M80. So, who knows? It's cool that we got some. When is this happening? I missed the date. Uh, this dates is... haven't been announced yet. Okay, so I'm yeah, assuming just... post Worlds. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably be the big event of the off season, I would assume. Yeah, if there's not any other kind of third party lands, um, this will be the big one, which will be yeah. fun. It'll be a fun like little post thing tournament. A lot of players will be free agents, so their orgs might not hold them back. It'll be used for tryouts, which would be cool to see a tryout team go and make some noise there, and then maybe they actually get signed by an org mm-hmm. um, as a team. It'll be cool. It'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah. All right, we'll wrap up here, uh, Bel Air. Thank you so much. For ha- for coming on, filling in for the cowards who didn't want to have to face the boogeyman, um, I'm gonna give you this time to, to to plug yourself. I know you already did earlier, but plug yourself. Anything you want to say, anything you want to plug, go ahead. It's all you. Thank you so much for giving me the mic. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It's great to talk to you. You know, we are the we are the fury of vitality matchup. You and I. We've we've combined on podcasts just yeah you dude, know we're just, we're just time talking. and time just, again just um, talking whatever glad that uh, Yens is getting to uh, enjoy a little vacation mm-hmm. and uh, excited to uh, have come back on the pod and I guess I'll wrap it just by saying guys check out uh, check out the YouTube channel yep. been Beller putting Baller. out yeah Beller Baller been putting out stuff pretty consistently trying to you know we've got wrapped up in the major. Um, But what I'm really excited to get back to is kind of digging into and spotlighting some of these players that you might have never actually seen play before from like a, you know, player point of view. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of the players who are kind of, you know, making main events, but 
could be taking that next step in the future. So check out the YouTube. I'm on Twitter sometimes, but I'll stop the plug there. Yeah, um, we'll link your YouTube and your Twitter in Valerio's YouTube and Valerio's Twitter in the description, along with lift the shift cord, a, a link to the shift cord, which you can join. Uh, once again, always make sure to follow us on socials as well. Um, and we will hopefully be back in full capacity this week. Hopefully, I say hopefully, really, I just want to run it back because I want to make more basketball references. But we will talk soon. Uh, road to shift summer league, road to world, road to everything is coming. So we'll talk soon. And uh, yeah, that's about it for us. Have a good one and enjoy your day.